Hello and welcome to Void Electronics. In today's video I would like to talk about audio amplifier distortion. More specifically I would like to talk about what it is, what causes it, how to observe it and finally how to measure THD using a spectrum analyzer. So let's get started. Let's start with the basics. First of all, what is distortion? Well, distortion happens when an amplifier's output is not able to perfectly reproduce the input signal, changing the waveform and the spectral components of the input. Let's have a look at what causes it. Distortion is caused by nonlinearities and clipping. Yeah, thanks a lot. Now it all makes sense, right? Well, bear with me because we have to talk about these topics separately. Let's talk about nonlinearities first. Linearity means that the transfer characteristic of a device is a straight line. Let's take linear amplification as an example. Linear amplification simply means multiplying the input signal by a constant. That constant is called gain. So the output signal is the input multiplied by the gain. If we were to plot the output with respect to the input, we would get a straight line. The higher the gain, the larger the slope is. Now let's change the characteristic to something non-linearity like a sigmoid. Even though the middle region looks fairly linear, the overall characteristic is wildly non-linear. Let's see what this has to do with amps. Well, active devices like transistors or vacuum tubes are inherently non-linear. To see this, you just have to look at their datasheets. See, this looks just like our theoretical sigmoid from before. So to make them behave linearly, circuit designers apply all sorts of tricks which are way beyond the purpose of this video. Let's just say that nonlinearities can be reduced, but they will never be zero, thus an amplifier will always have some sort of distortion. So what about clipping? Well, the output stage of an amplifier can only swing between its power rails. So if you have a power supply providing plus and minus 10 volts, the output can only swing between plus and minus 10 volts. But what if we have a gain of 10 and an input that swings all the way up to 2 volts? In this case, the theoretical output should swing up to 20 volts, but due to a limited power supply, it can only swing up to 10 volts and then it will plateau as the transistors saturate. This is called clipping and it is another form of distortion. Also, Class AB amplifiers exhibit what we call crossover distortion. This has to do with the fact that transistors need a certain base emitter voltage in order to conduct. So it could happen that as the input signal swings through low values, none of the transistors will conduct, and above a certain threshold they would suddenly start conducting, creating distortion. Not only that, but transistors also exhibit nonlinearity when transitioning from cutoff into the active region. Okay, enough boring theory for today, so let's see how to observe all these in practice. Our device under test today is this Sansui G5700 and in order to complete the setup we need a dummy load, a signal generator, an oscilloscope and a spectrum analyzer. For all of today's experiments the speakers will be replaced by this dummy load, which is just a bunch of power resistors. This will give us a nice controlled impedance at the output and also this will avoid any noise during testing, so it's a really nice thing to have. Also, the amplifier's input will be driven by this signal generator. That's because characterizing an amplifier while playing music is a really hard thing to do because the waveform of the music is really unpredictable. So I need a nice and predictable signal like a sine wave. That's why the signal generator is set to 1 kHz sine wave 1 volt RMS. So the first way to look at distortion is in the time domain, meaning that we look at the way signals evolve with respect to time. Before doing this, I should warn you that this experiment is kind of risky. And that's because not all the amplifiers have the outputs referenced to ground. And if the outputs are not referenced to ground, you cannot ground them to the oscilloscope or you will blow up the amplifier and probably even the oscilloscope. So to fix this, you would have to use a differential probe. In my case, the output of the amplifier is referenced to ground, so we are safe. Another important aspect here is to make sure that you don't fry the front end of your spectrum analyzer. So you need to check the maximum voltage that it can take and make sure you don't exceed that with your amplifier. This amplifier shouldn't exceed that, however, just to be extra safe, I'm connecting it using a 10x oscilloscope probe. So you have a times 10 attenuation between the output of the amplifier and the spectrum analyzer. 
So what we have here is the output of the signal generator on channel 1 and the output of the amplifier on channel 2. Let's slowly crank it up and see what happens. So far the signal looks really nice, it's clean. Let's give it some more volume and see what happens. And here it starts to distort. Let's not do this for too long because I don't want to fry the amplifier. As you can see, this method is really nice for observing clipping, but it's not that good when we try to observe non-linearities. So maybe the next technique will be a little bit better at this. Now the next technique is not a time domain one, but it's rather a transfer characteristic technique. And to do this, we have to reconfigure the oscilloscope just a bit. First of all, we need to put it in XY mode. And now we get something else here. At first we get a straight line. So at this point, instead of looking at the time domain analysis, we are looking at the output with respect to the input, meaning that this is a transfer characteristic. Now let's slowly crank up the volume and see what happens. So as you can see, we get this ellipse. So unfortunately, due to some phase shift in the amplifier, we don't get a straight line, but let's ignore this for a while. And let's give it some more volume to see what happens. Here it still performs in a linear fashion, but let's increase it just a little bit more. And now, as you can see, it distorts and it also oscillates probably. By the way, during all these tests, you can also use a true RMS voltmeter at the output in order to estimate the clean power that you get out of the amplifier. So let's look at this. I would say it's still clean at around 25 volts, but if you go above it, it starts to clip and oscillate. So by doing the math, we get around 78 watts RMS into an 8 ohm load, which is okay given that this is a 75 watt amplifier. And now the ultimate way to look at distortion is in the frequency domain. To do this, we are going to use this spectrum analyzer. So what we have here is basically amplitude with respect to frequency. So this is a different type of graph than what the oscilloscope produces. Let's see what it looks like um, when we crank up the volume. But before doing that, let's have a quick look at the settings as well. So this is a really special low frequency spectrum analyzer. So it starts from basically zero and it goes all the way up to 25 kilohertz. So this should give us enough span to look at 25 harmonics, which is huge. And um, in our case, since we are feeding in a perfect sine wave, so to say, we are supposed to get one straight line somewhere in here and close to no harmonics, all the way up to 75 watts. Let's see if that happens. Okay, here's our one kilohertz sine wave and it looks very clean at this point. Let's increase the volume more, more, and now maybe you can see some harmonics and now you can definitely see them. So this is what happens when you increase the volume. And this is what distortion looks like on the spectrum analyzer. In, in the case of this amplifier, the signal is very clean and then if you increase the volume just a tiny notch, it goes into some wild distortion like you've seen. By the way, in order to do this, it would be a good idea to characterize the signal generator as well. In my case, uh, the unit signal generator produces 0.07% THD at 1 kHz. So it's decent, but it's probably not really good enough for, for this amplifier. However, getting a better one is quite difficult. And the amplifier, by the way, specifies a THD of 0.03%, which is just crazy. And it specifies that all the way up to the rated power, which is 75 watts. Now let's check the specs. To do this, we have to reconfigure the spectrum analyzer just a bit and configure it to do a THD analysis. So we go to analyze, harmonic, we have to configure the fundamental, in this case it is 1 kilohertz. And we also have to configure the number of harmonics that we want to observe. Let's say we want to observe 10 harmonics, I think, I think that's a fair number. And now we also have a THD spec. Without a signal, of course, the THD is 
goes crazy but that's fine let's increase the volume and see what we get so now at a reasonable volume we get a relatively low number let's increase the volume and see what happens but things are already not looking great so we should increase the volume all the way up to 24.5 volts rms which is right here and here let's do a quick average let's do 10 averages and then i think we can measure the thd and believe it or not this is bang on it's 0.03 percent this is amazing interestingly enough one notch in volume makes all the difference in the world so here it's clean and here it's quite distorted and this can be seen both on the spectrum analyzer and on the oscilloscope so this is clean and this is distorted and once again this is clean and this is distorted so that's it for now if you like this video please give it a thumbs up don't forget that you can join this community on discord and also you can subscribe on youtube for more videos like this or videos related to electronics and programming that's it for now. Bye.